Okay, this video is for tuning, or I should say a bass tune, uh, after installing a cam in a Eagle motor, so 2009 plus Hemi. Um, you know, it's, it's good to watch the video that I did prior to this, which is the 2008 and before. There's a lot of information in that as well, uh, but a lot of the information is going to be the same. Okay, so uh, everything here that is green... Um, are things that I've changed. Not everything here is necessary. Like you don't need to worry about this here. Um, let's see. Now this is a manual transmission car um, and I did have to make this idle actually a little bit higher than the automatics. So technically I raised the idle to 800 RPMs. Uh, you can kind of see this is here where it was stock. And this is what I moved it to. Uh, I lowered the cold RPM and then I raised the warm RPM down in here, uh, which is actually technically lower than this. But like I said in the past video, I prefer to use the least amount of idle possible um, without making the idle unreliable. So we pretty much do that on all these tables here. Uh, have it so that way after the car is warmed up that it is... Uh, 800 RPMs, see 800 here. Now you can modify this. I'll see this was all 700 before, now it's 800. I'll say you can increase the cold RPM idle if you really want, depending on part of the country you live in. Uh, right now I'm in Texas, so a lot of, <laughs> doesn't really get that cold here, or at least for a significant time of the year. Um, now airflow. Uh, this is going to be the same exact thing as the other one. This is going to be proportional park neutral. This is going to be where your chop comes from in your cam. Like I said in previous videos, a lot of the people that make camshafts for Hemis uh, do not have a lot of overlap and they play with this table a lot in order to make the car have a harder chop. Here's the factory table. Notice 22 degrees positive, 22 degrees negative. Uh, this is similar to the GM overspeed, underspeed, but it's all in one table. Then this is where I'm at on this one. So here it's increased to 38, 38, stock 22, 22. This car had a nice idle, and it is also on my YouTube. Um, I think there's a Challenger video on there somewhere of it idling, and it does have a nice sound to it. Okay, one of the things, raise the max airflow limit. All right, startup airflow. So you're gonna increase your startup airflow. Um, right here is stock. And right here is where we're at now. Um, I tuned this car once here in Texas um, and started up perfect. Uh, got to Wisconsin and it wouldn't start. I actually had to change and actually increase the airflow in order to get it to start at the lower elevation properly. So you can see the difference, you know, 5.51 here, 11.91. So, you know, you're going to want to take this table and add 5 to 10% at a time until you can start it and it doesn't take forever to start and you don't have to hit the gas pedal. And that's the thing, if you have to hit the gas pedal to get it to start, you need to add more airflow in here. Now notice, unlike the pre-2009 cars, there no longer is a minimum airflow table, which makes tuning for a cam harder. So next we'll go look at the spark. Okay, spark here, minimum base spark. You notice this table is significantly different um, than the pre-Eagles, um, and that's because these tables are used differently. Minimum base spark I have here, set to 10 here, 5 here. This is where it's at stock. You can see it's, it's all over the place. So you set 10 here through these four tables, set 5 here, and then grab from here to here and hit this button here and it creates these numbers. Do not do this on a pre-09. This is 09 and up only. This is stock. This is where we're at. Change this table, whole table to 10. Okay, a lot of this other stuff you don't have to pay attention to. I've changed them for a reason that's not um, relevant to what you need here. 
Next is torque model loss. Most important table right here. Now this is what controls when the vehicle comes to a stop. This is the table that controls how fast the throttle body closes. You know, if you were not to change this table, this car would start up, it would run, it would drive, but every time you'd come up to an intersection, it would die. Okay, here's this table stock. Seven over here, one point eight over here. Flip the table. I do 243 here, five in these two tables, and then I grab from here to here and hit the interpolate button. This right here I have found on this specific car, which is a 2014 Challenger with an HRT2 camshaft um, from Comp Cams, which is similar to an XFI273. Um, this right here will make it so that you can come up to a stop without it dying. Um, so that's basically it. You need to change this table so that the car doesn't die when you come to a stop. You need to set the minimum spark so that the car idles properly. You need to set the startup airflow so that way you can start the car without having to press the gas pedal. You want to increase the max airflow limits of the car because the cam will allow for more air to come into the car. You don't need to be setting any codes for that. You need to go back to idle here. You need to adjust this to get your cam chopped. Now you can adjust it the opposite direction to make it not chop at all or to lighten the chop if you're trying to hide it for some reason. You're going to want to go to the RPM, increase or decrease RPM depending on how the user wants the car to run. And that's the base, what's necessary to um, tune a camshaft in a 2009 and up. A Hemi vehicle. Now I do have other videos related to the transmission and related to the fuel injector pulse width um, that will help you dial in the car. Um, just for uh, example I will show you. This is where we're at now. This car the fuel trims always stay within three. This is where it was stock. You can notice it's significantly different and the thing is the only thing that we changed was we put a cam in the car. Um, so that will be the end of that video there. Um, I guess stay tuned. We will have more tuning videos for the Dodge coming up uh, shortly.